of Great Britain, opening at 75 kilograms in the snatch. Hewitt, a lifter we've seen open with 75 kilograms before earlier this year in Albania. So certainly within her wheelhouse. Pretty easy opener from Hewitt. Gives a smile to the crowd. So we're off to a great start in the women's 58 kilogram B category. And if you're just tuning in, this live stream of the 2017 IWF World Championships is brought to you by USA Weightlifting in partnership with Barbend.com, the official media partner of USA Weightlifting. Check out Barbend.com for news, analysis, and session recaps here from the IWF World Championships. All right, the next lifter up will be Rachel leblanc Bazine of Canada, opening at 76 kilograms. leblanc Bazine might be a name that fans of strength sports are used to, both in the weightlifting and CrossFit realms. Her sister, Camille leblanc Bazine is the 2014 CrossFit Games champion. Looks like a little soft in the catch there for Bazine. Um, I would expect that might be due to some platform jitters. Um, I saw her warming up in the back, and um, roughly this weight seemed very easy for her. So I'd expect she's going to come out and make that on her next attempt. This is her first world championship. All right, and the next lifter... We have up what well, looks like LeBlanc Bazine might be following herself. Um, but in the meantime, I am joined again by USA Weightlifting CEO Phil Andrews. Phil, it's great to have you back. You have been putting out a number of fires and things that are kind of popping up over the course of this competition. Yes, I'm, I'm beginning to think I should just answer my phone. Anaheim Fire Department. <laughs> they, uh, might get, they might be getting fewer calls today. Uh, hopefully so. Uh, you know, I'm glad to be able to take some work off of our hardworking fire department here in Anaheim. Um, I'm also intrigued to see two Canadians and uh, a Brit in this session, so I'm happy that I'm seeing that uh, just under a half the session is represented by passports that I have. <laughs> um, All right, well, this will be the second attempt for LeBlanc Bazine. Uh, close missed on her first attempt. My guess was she'd come out and make this, I think there might have been um, some nerves involved in that first miss. Warming up um, behind the stage, she looked really, really solid. So I expect we're going to see her make this here. I want to thank barbend.com for their coffee run between the two sessions. Uh, it may mean that I am somewhat coherent during this uh, session. Uh, well, well, Phil, we're happy to help, and that is a good lift for LeBlanc Bazine on the board with 76 kilograms, and uh, a big thanks to the team we have out here from Barbent.com. Not just myself, um, filling in, helping out, writing session recaps, and sometimes getting coffee. Uh, yeah, it was, and it wasn't just for me. I wasn't being a diva. Um, it was uh, David's uh, team were doing a run, and uh, we were invited to join them on that run. I am now the proud owner of a very large, whatever a Starbucks ease is for large. <laughs> Venti. A venti. A venti, okay. which I, I always assumed was from Italian, but I don't think they're going to claim I anything. I think they have their own language Yeah, Starbucksies. All right, and with that, we will bring up, it looks like, Laura Rachel Hewitt for her second attempt, who looked fantastic on her first attempt. And, Phil, uh, I know you had just missed that lift, um, but... Great start for Great Britain so far today in this session. Yeah, it, it has. It's nice to see the two young GB girls uh, doing well this session and last. Um, 
Uh, do we have any British coaches commentating later on this week, or uh, were they not able to fit that into their schedule? We don't, actually. Unfortunately, we uh, we couldn't quite coordinate it as far as scheduling. We tried. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. We invited uh, together with barbend.com, or really barbend with the email addresses that they gave them, uh, invited some, uh, some of our... Uh, athletes to or some of our fellow nations to commentate on the sessions this week. There seems to be some confusion with the TC from Mongolia and Rachel uh, Bazine. Um, she's explained that she is in fact Canadian and uh, is going for that uh, that lift. I'm sure very politely in Canadian fashion. Uh, I'm very sorry but that's me! <laughs> And it looks pretty solid for her, so she will end the snatch portion with 78 kilograms. Nice quick session, just seven lifters here today, but um, some names you might recognize, even if you're a fan of, um, even if you're not just a weightlifting fan, but maybe even following the world of functional fitness and CrossFit, a few names you might recognize in this session, one of which is Thurder Erla Hulgadotter, who is a multi-time CrossFit Games athlete, so clearly a successful cross-sport athlete here and she'll be opening at 79 kilograms representing Iceland and it's uh, it's interesting to see uh, I was interviewing with CrossFit.com just before this and it was very interesting to see talk about the Icelandic lifters a very nice opener for Helga Dukhada. and uh, they've really become a, a leading country in the sport of CrossFit and their national team for women really owes itself to to that evolution and um, we're delighted to see Iceland here we we had them of course in um, uh, in the uh, Houston World Championships and uh, it's uh, good to see them do well different athletes from the Houston World Championships so cool yes. to see some different names um, up on the board and this will bring up this will bring up the second attempt for Laura Rachel Hewitt we did have a change she did go up to 79 kilograms and she smoked her opener um, so I'd expect this to certainly be in her capabilities today she was the first athlete to take an attempt in this session yeah it's uh, and here comes Hewitt for her uh, second attempt in the uh, in the snatch four kilo jump um, pretty conservative Odin at 75 it looks like and uh, you mentioned she had a really really good uh, attempt at 74 so let's see how they do yep good it's interesting to see Britain have opted now for the red they competed the entire last quad in either white or blue and it's good they've gone red with everything for uh, their new sponsor uh, Kirky and there's uh, Dave Sawyer the coach there um, he's a, a tremendously knowledgeable guy uh, probably the top coach arguably in Great Britain right now um, and uh, we see him at many many world championships very successful businessman as well uh, it's not his full-time gig but it's interesting to see them go for the red much like the British Lions in rugby um, sort of I, I find it weird seeing either the USA or uh, Great Britain in red and I uh, it's for me it perhaps it's because of the, my Canadian connections but it's it's always strange to see them all in red at championships and we do the same thing uh, Kraska from Poland now Speaking yeah. of red singlets. Speaking of red singlets, and, and uh, not as Zygmunt Schmorsch says, who's joined us all week here at the World Championships, currently presenting the education seminar for the IWF. All right, that'll be a good lift for Kraska. And, okay, well, one red light. I'm not sure what that center ref saw. Maybe a little softness Maybe. in the elbows. I don't know if we'll see a replay of that one or not. Poland, of course, famous for their red singlets. They've stayed pretty consistent on their color scheme in weightlifting for the past number of decades. Uh, yeah, I think that's been pretty much been a singlet since I came across them in weightlifting. It I didn't see anything wrong with that, David, did you? I I, I didn't notice. Again, we, we kind of saw, we've seen the perspective that's kind of from both side rest, but we didn't really see the center, so maybe they saw a little elbow softness. I'm not really sure. All right, let's bring up Jennifer Lombardo. She is our second Italian athlete of the day. Um, we had Georgia Russo in the 53B session right before this. 
Opening at 81 kilograms. Looks pretty good to me. The judges agree. Three white lights. Yeah, very nice. Oh, that's interesting. There is, uh, if you go to uh, roguefitness.com forward slash new gear, you may find an interesting surprise. Well, we, we might talk about that a little later on in the week, but uh, that's just an Easter egg that Phil Andrews is throwing out there on the uh, on the live stream, but yeah. I feel like it's more like a Thanksgiving turkey. Well, certainly you might see something covered on uh, barbin.com uh, in the coming days as yes, well. Yes, yes. Um, I, I mean, we, we Team USA is sponsored by Rogue, but this event is sponsored by Alico. I, I don't feel like that's uh, it's out of line for us to talk about that, but I do want to thank them for their the amount they've done for Team USA and thank Alaiko for what they've done for this championship. It's been a very wonderful working and um, collaborative relationship between the three of us, actually, to make sure that this went off well, the Pan Ams went off well, and uh, our national events went off well. And uh, Alaiko and Rogue have played very nicely in that particular sandbox, so very, very happy with, with both companies. That's fantastic. Okay, this is Lepsa from Romania. And having had a ringside seat, so to speak, uh, on all those competitions, it, it's true. They've done quite the job. Uh, Romanians, uh, Romanians obviously had a long history in weightlifting. And uh, this is another athlete, much like her earlier today, when I mentioned I was surprised to see an athlete in the B group. I sort of feel that way about Lepsa from Romania. And um, you know, Niku Vlad's country, Niku is the vice president of the IWF and um, a two-time Olympic champion. In fact, uh, it was interesting in the Congress, uh, Tama Shayan, he said, does anybody remember if I was here from 1984 Olympic Games? And uh, Niku was shouting from behind him, me, I was the Olympic champion. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely there. All right, second attempt for Kraska at 82 kilograms. Looking lift there. All right, three white lights. Uh, Niku Vlad, um, the progenitor, I guess you could say, of what, at least in America, we would call the Romanian deadlift, which yes. is a, a training accessory exercise that we've written about um, extensively on barbend.com, and I actually believe some of that content might have appeared through a syndication partnership on USA Weightlifting's website as well. Um, you know, you know, you're doing something right when you sort of invent an exercise or people see you doing it and you're so strong that people from other countries say, I have to start doing what that guy's doing. Yes, and, and Niku has been had a tremendous career both for Romania and, and as many people may or may not know, he lifted for Australia for some time, which explains his very good English. Very much better attempt there for Lepsa of Romania. And she is a lifter who we've seen in, in this bodyweight category go as heavy as 93 kilograms in the snatch. Well, that's why you know, it's, it's very interesting to see her down at this weight. It's um, you know, 82 kilos in for 83. Maybe she's going to take 85 or 86 in her third attempt. And it'll sort of be a reasonable jump, I would think. But you know, that's, it's interesting to see her both in the B group but also at that, at that particular entry total. Now she has she has gone as heavy as 99 in the snatch, but that was uh, a bodyweight category. 63. Up. Yeah, that's Lepsa or it's uh, Lepsa. Lepsa Hewitt. Um, Hewitt, I believe, has not gone quite that heavy. I think the best snatch we have for her on record is 81 kilograms. So this, thanks for pointing that out, Phil. This would be a um, a competition PR for her. Yeah, as far I, as we I was going to say this is as far as I know. She's not done 99. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 
Um, again, a uh, nice, ju very young squad they brought. And uh, sadly, she's not done 82 either. Um, but uh, gets a, s a 79 on the board. And look, a total is a total. And uh, she has a chance still to make that at this point. So um, uh, happy for, uh, for Laura. Um, it's it nice to see this young GB squad. They're, they're missing uh, really their two big stars, Zoe Smith and uh, Becca Tyler, though uh, Sarah Davis is here mm -hmm. with a 222 entry total in the 63s, which is wow. like very impressive. Yeah, that's robust. Um, so uh, excited to see how uh, how Sarah might do in the 63A group. We have uh, Jessica Lucero, so good luck to her. But one kilo less than Lucero, please. <laughs> All right, with that, Hulga Daughter coming up for her second attempt. Look very strong on her first. And Phil, that's a, a great looking second attempt. Um, it somehow seems that Icelandic athletes, when they lift, always manage to smile. It, I, I don't know if it's a compulsory thing in Iceland or if it's something they're taught by their coach, but you know, that's something that many coaches teach because one, I hope you're having fun, but two, you gotta sell that lift to the judges. If you look like, I know from when I've been a national referee in competitions, if you look like you missed it, then I think you probably, you probably missed, missed it. Yeah. All right. Well, we have Lombardo of Italy. Her second attempt at 83. So just a, a yeah. pretty conservative two kilo jump on her opener here. But it looks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck. It it's a mislift. A duck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this stream waters about peak status, so we mustn't laugh. Uh, they call me you know, insightful, but I think Miss Lombardo here was uh, quite excited about that make. Uh, she sold that one. She did. Yeah. She did. Speaking at, of. At no point was I thinking she didn't make that, and that was a perfect lift. I mean, right into the catch position, boom, and, and up. I mean, uh, that, that looks like she was super happy about that. Was that a PR? Or? Let's uh, give me just a second, and we'll figure that out. I don't believe so. No, we've seen her go... As heavy oh. as 86 kilograms. Yeah, but still pretty but good. But yeah, not bad. And I, I want to spend, spend two seconds thanking uh, J.P. Nicoletta, who puts together all these stats. Uh, has helped both. That was you? Yeah. I would discredit Nicoletta. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tali Darcini of Canada. Great opener, 84. Yeah, that was a good lift for Canada. I apologize. Well, that's previously uh, JP's put together at most of them. He he did, and I will say JP Nicoletta, who in, in my opinion is the premier weightlifting color commentator in the world right now. I agree with that, and that's why he was uh, promoted relentlessly by me to our TV partners at Lagadere uh, Production, and uh, has been it will be commentating in the vast majority of eight groups, and he's also produced a lot of stats for Team USA as well, which is great. All right, we have Kraska's third attempt. And I will say my my stat sheets are, are nothing compared to JP's, although they, I... Uh, they are excellent, though. What I like is you've got the Italian national championships and you know, things like that in there, which it makes it so much better for uh, for us as commentators, but also hopefully for the listener to know, well, actually, what was that beer? All right, and that is going to be a miss for Kraska. Misses it behind... So she will be credited with her second attempt at 82 kilograms. So no bomb outs in this session. Every lifter has appeared at least once on stage and made a lift. So that is great to see. And we are ending, or we are entering uh, the tail end of the snatch portion of the women's 53 kilogram B session here. Just seven lifters in this session. We opened today with the 53 kilogram B session. We had 11 lifters. Now in the 58s and the Bs, just seven. So nice quick session. Um, and but don't go anywhere. We have plenty more action left today, including uh, the next session on stage after this, which will be the men's 56 kilogram A session, the first A session of the week. And with that, we have Lepsa of Romania coming up for her third and final attempt at 85 kilograms. Yes, 85 for Lepsa and. Uh yeah, I, I, maybe she's sporting a small injury or something like that. They're taking her total down, and you know, again, that might explain like uh, Sidestera in the B group. Why? All right, so maybe not the day she was hoping for, and, and certainly a bit below 
what we've seen her do on the international stage, even in split Croatia earlier this year, ending with a 93-kilogram snatch there. But she is on the board. She does have the chance to total today. So take a look at this replay. Yeah, just not really having the groove there. Just four lifts remain here in the snatch portion of the 58B session. Oh, and I, I like with the passion with which Lombardo is approaching her lifts today. That's... Uh, it, it's, it seems quintessentially Italian, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Italy, a country where weightlifting has grown significantly in popularity over the past 10 years, um, especially in the central and northern areas of the country. Oh. No lift, misses it out in front. Let's uh, check the replay there. But she will finish two for three in the snatch portion. Kind of bangs it out a little bit with the hips there. Yeah, just again, a little bit out front. Seems to be a technical error for her. Pull was strong enough, but it's no good. All right, Holga Daughter will come out for her third and final attempt at 86. This is significant competition PR for her as far as weightlifting competition goes. Yes, yeah, that's uh, that, that's a pretty big lift, and I think Iceland is slowly improving as the, the crossfitters get better at their weightlifting. Great lift from her, so she is three for three on the day. Great start for her. <laughs> Gets a big hug from her her coach. I'm actually not sure who's coaching her um, I, right I, now. I had no idea. The Icelandic weightlifting coach, his name escapes me. I know a man would know, but he's sadly not in this room. All right, with that, we only have one lifter left in the session. We do. The only, the only junior in this session, actually. Yeah, a very impressive performance from McKinney. I like the singlets there, the sort of CAA in Canada across the front and the maple leaf on the back. It's a real can-do attitude. It's a really a can add attitude, actually. can add do Which and sounds a bit like a Scottish man telling you that he can't do something. I can do Unfortunately, that's going to be a no lift no. for Talia. It looks like uh, I'm not really sure where she kind of felt something there. And no, just really gets it above the knees and kind of waves it off. Um, I'm not sure we're actually going to see her come out for a third attempt. I wonder if something's not quite feeling right on her pull. Okay, we will see her uh, attempt this once again. You see her back there in the on-deck area. Two minutes on the clock. I believe she does have both changes still available if she wants to increase a bit, give herself some more time. Yep, she'll hopefully uh, bleed as much out. I suspect they'll send them back and maybe make a one, one kilo change. And this is, again, the last snatch of the 58B session here. But 10 minutes after the conclusion of this lift, we will be back for the clean and jerks. And then we'll take a bit longer, or a, a bit of a break, and then um, action will resume with the men's 56 kilogram A session here in Anaheim at the Anaheim Convention Center. Final lift of the session. Seems to be much better. Yeah, uh, that's three whites. Night and day. There uh. you go. <laughs> Never know. She missed that second one at 87. After the way that looked, it's yeah. a good job. Well, Fatality. maybe she was, this, she was treating the second attempt as a way to just kind of fill it out, get her positioning set. Yeah. 
far, I mean, she's opening at 104 in the clean and jerk, so we'll see, you know, how much she totals today. Maybe she'll get over a chance to go over 200. And uh, we have uh, Polish opening up at 105 also. So we'll see. All right, folks. Well, that is the end of the snatch portion of the women's 53-kilogram B session. Uh, on behalf of USAWeightlifting.com and their media partner, Barbend.com, I'm David Tao, joined by Phil which is pretty small, just seven lifters, pretty quick, is Lara Rachel Hewitt of Great Britain. Thank you so much for tuning in. These B sessions for American viewers are broadcast on USA Weightlifting, weightlifting site, usaweightlifting.org. Internationally as well. Hewitt, 93 kilograms on the barbell. Great looking opener for Hewitt. Gives a smile and a nod to the judges. Three white lights. She's on the board. Pretty good opening attempt. Let's check out the replay. All right, so Hewitt is on the board. I just critted. All right, and with that, I am joined once again by USA Weightlifting CEO and man about town, Phil Andrews. Phil, thanks for joining us again. You're very welcome, and apologies for being uh, just a couple of minutes late. Uh, my average lap time is reducing, but is still quite high. <laughs> All right, and with that, we have the first attempt for Thurder Erla Holgadotter from Iceland, who had a great performance in the snatch portion, went three for three, the only lifter to do so in this category. I've got to imagine this is reasonably close to a, uh, a PR for Helgadotia in the clean and jerk. Right, good looking lift for her. And um, actually, Phil, in weightlifting competition er earlier this year at uh, the Europeans in Split Croatia, she did open at 102 kilograms and made that. Check out the replay there. Although at that competition, she was a bit over body weight. She was technically competing as a 63. So at this body weight, on the international stage, technically a PR. Good to see her on the board here. There you go. That was pretty good from memory, I thought. All right, LeBlanc Bazinet, a very famous sister, but she's a good lifter in an all right. Mm -hmm. uh, typically is at 53, so she's up a category here. Um, and uh, I think that's just to make uh, sure she had an easier day of it or didn't have to cut so much. Uh, a reasonably similar session placement for her in the, in the 53 and the 58. So it sort of makes sense to, to go up in her circumstances. We had a similar thing in Team USA with uh, Jessica Lucero moving up to 63. It's a nice lift on her opener. And that is, 98 is around what we've seen her open as a 58 kilogram athlete before, Phil, you mentioned. Um, she kind of burst onto the weightlifting scene as a 53, mm -hmm. but... Um, I was originally scheduled here as a 53. They changed the verification meeting. And, uh, yeah, she's been a promising lifter for Canada. She's lifting the World University Championships, I remember, in Chiang Mai. And uh, um, Camille, I think her sister, was actually due to lift in that same championship, but, but in the end was unable to do so. 
but they're both very promising athletes and very, uh, Camille obviously very successful on the CrossFit side. Uh, but has got a reasonable weightlifting total. She's competed a couple of meets in the US uh, since I believe due to her husband. She has dual nationality in the United States. Um, or at least she lives here in the United States. So she competes uh, locally in the US. All right, we have Lepsa of Romania opening at 98 kilograms. All right, good looking opener for her. We noted in the snatch portion, and it seems true for the clean and jerks today, uh, she is lifting uh, below what we've seen her do on the international stage. Um, in this weight category, uh, we've seen her go as heavy as 117 kilograms in the clean and jerk, so 98, pretty conservative opener. We've actually seen her open at 113, which we saw at the European Championships in Croatia a bit earlier this year. So. Not sure if she may, she's maybe nursing an injury, took some time off after that competition, um, lifting a little bit below what we've seen her do. Otherwise, yeah. I actually say it wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't have been shocking to see her in the A session. The, um, yes, I, I think that makes sense. And, and, and much like the, the 53s before them, the 58s have been pretty robust this time around. Um, have seen a lot of removals from that category from the nine not attending nations um, uh, plus DPR career but it's uh, yeah, once again coming back to Laura she's um, improving steadily and I think the whole GB team is and uh, We had a nice little streak going. We had four made lifts yeah. to start the clean and jerks, but some point it goes down. But fortunately, all the all the openers were made so far. That's great for everybody. Uh, everybody, uh, the four we've had lifted so far. See if Lombardo, Dos Signi, and um, Raska can uh, can uh, get the same result. And in the the um, A session tomorrow, we may see some exciting lifting. Uh, Kuo Sing Chun from uh, Chinese Tepe is uh, lifting tomorrow. He's the world record holder in the clean and jerk, so. The only the only woman to set a senior world record so far this year, actually. That's right, yeah. That may change this week. Or um, she might do it again. Well, yes, yeah, so or it might be her. She might again, remain. That's yeah. yeah, exactly <laughs> right. It's, 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 she might be the only woman still, but twice. I was it's very careful with my phrasing, so that's yes. why. <laughs> it's exactly right. That's, that's still correct. It's, um, you know, we may see another one or two attempted. Um, I, I think that one's the most likely, mm -hmm. um, but there's there's a very strong 48 kilo category here. I wouldn't be surprised if there was at least an attempt there. Mm -hmm. uh, same for the 53s, um, uh, but you know in the higher categories, I'm not sure I see anyone going after uh, Tatiana's records on the, the women's Supers. side. Yeah, um, and of course you know we have this may be one of the last worlds or the last worlds contested under these bodyweight categories mm -hmm. before those white records are wiped. So it'll be interesting to see. You know, if you can write your name into history and kind of leave it etched. Yeah. Because there won't be too many opportunities to break these records. All right, we have Hewitt coming out for her third attempt. Still at 99 kilos. See if she has more success with this lift. Not able to complete the clean, kind of collapses under it a little bit, but gives a wave to the crowd, and so her day will end with a 172 kilogram total. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think she'd be disappointed with her jerk performance, um, but I think there's uh, probably a not the, the worst day at the office for her in the World Championships. I think it's, it's the first senior world. Yes, first senior world. It is. So. So I think the strategy for GB is to try and get the experience for the athletes. Um, I've just had a message I mentioned in the last session from Avanish Pandu from Mauritius. Um, and sure enough, he is watching and sent me a picture of our wonderful webcast in his house. Well, fortunately, you can only hear us and you don't have to see us on the webcast. The, exactly, so. exactly. We don't want to damage his TV. <laughs> All right, Lombardo of Italy, her opening attempt, 100 kilograms on the barbell. And 
she is an exciting lifter to watch. Lifts with a lot of speed, passion, and uh, an easy looking opener at 100 kilograms. She looked like she almost power cleaned that. Let's check out the replay here. Seemed to catch it. No, caught it fairly high though. Nice easy jerk. And with that, we'll see the second attempt of Rachel LeBlanc Bazine of Canada. So far, all lifters have made attempts in both the snatch and the clean and jerk. Two lifters have yet to take clean and jerk attempts. And this is the second attempt for LeBlanc Bazine of Canada, an, a last name that is shouldn't be unfamiliar to anyone who loves strength sports. Quite a successful family. Not able to stand all the way up with that. On her first attempt, she did pause in the catch position of the clean, but was able to uh, stand up without much of an issue here. Uh, I'm not sure if she may, might have caught this one a little too far forward or backward. Let's check out the replay, but not able, didn't just quite have the legs for it right there. And yeah, just kind of just kind of feeling, feeling heavy. So maybe she'll be able to come out, catch that with a bit of a quicker bounce. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right, we have uh, two minutes on the clock for LeBlanc Bazine. Not sure if we're going to see a change there. Now this will, um, unfortunately for some, maybe fortunately for others, be the last session that you'll hear myself and Phil on. Yes. Uh, this week. And um, you may direct your compliments to barben.com. <laughs> they got me out of the way early. Um, and uh, I think you'll hear a little bit more from David, less from me. Uh, and unfortunately, you won't hear me during the American Open either. Well, the, the good news is, uh, while we won't he hear any more of Phil uh, this week, we do have some really fantastic color commentators lined up. Uh, for the stream on usaweightlifting.org, including uh, two-time Olympian Chad Vaughn, Olympic medalist and still American record holder Cheryl Hayworth. Uh, they'll actually be on together for a couple of sessions a little later in the week. Um, really looking forward to hearing their insight and perspective as athletes with a lot of experience um, competing on the world stage. So looking forward to have them having them on the stream starting... Cheryl, I believe, Friday, Chad starting Saturday. All right, LeBlanc Bazinet, 101 kilograms. A third and final attempt. Up, 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 up. You know, pretty much the exact same situation. Um, not, not able to stand up with it, didn't quite have the legs for it today. So she will be credited with a 176 kilogram total. Yeah, and uh, you know, not. I'm not sure she'll be happy with that day at the office. Three for six is never what you want, but at least one of them was in uh, each lift, at least. Um, and uh, yeah, it's probably a little bit disappointing for LeBlanc Bazané, but she's uh, especially being up the weight category. Uh, our scoreboard, because of the new IWF rules, doesn't show us the body weights here, uh, and I wonder if she was. Um, a little light going into uh, this competition, not a, certainly not a 458. Right. Four kilo jump for Lepsa here. What's that? Four kilo jump on her opener. Which sort of, again, looking at her history, that makes sense. She's more than capable of 102. Solid enough to me. Let's see what the judges say. Now they agree. Three white lights. Yeah, I, you know, it wasn't as solid maybe as her opening attempt where she really stuck that jerk. But take a look at the replay here. Good enough. And that quickly, we're about halfway through the clean and jerk portion of a, a pretty small 58B session here in Anaheim. Of course, a 58 a session occurring tomorrow afternoon, and this will bring up the lifter from Canada. She is the only junior lifter in this session, opening at 103 kilograms. And 
starts off the clean and jerk for a Designy of Canada in the uh, same way she finished the snatch. Very confidently, uh, already getting into the 190s. Uh, solid total there. Um, and uh, goes into first place by some six kilos. You know, I've never seen her, as we watch the replay here, Phil, I don't believe I've seen her lift in person before, but I really enjoy watching her. Great technician. Yeah. Um, good positioning. Yeah, she's, she's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I'm curious who her coach is. I'm thinking it's Steve Sandor, uh, who's actually Hungarian, um, but has lived in Canada for now several decades. Um, but yeah, I, I think she's, you're right, very nice technique. Yeah, 190 is a respectable total. She's still got two lifts left. Yep. Um, it's good to see Canada, another one of these nations who are sort of emerging and slowly etching their way upwards in these results, which is really pleasing to see. All right, Holga Daughter, her second attempt. This is to stay perfect for the day. A little challenge on the clean there. Zero on the jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Much less so on the jerk. You know, one thing I've noticed about Icelandic athletes, Phil, and this this is a, a positive stereotype, they are very strong overhead. Well, yeah, if you look at Magnus Magnusson, the, the world's strongest man, you know, he, was, he, he won the world's strongest man many times. Uh, four, you're correct, and uh, thank you. Um, and uh, part of that's because he could do so well on the overheads. The um, that he could do, you know. Obviously, we have a, a great history of Icelandic strongmen, um, and well remembered. That uh, we just looked it up, and indeed, uh, he won four times um, the world strongest man. And he was great with the overhead, you know, tossing the keg over the high bar. Um, can you tell I grew up watching World Strongest Man? <laughs> which, by the way, my mother still thinks I were. Current? <laughs> my mother thinks I sell barbells, which is close enough. So I'll take that. Yeah, that's closer. Mom, if you're watching, this is actually what I do. She's um, confused that World Strongest Man isn't the Olympics and maybe thinks I go to weightlifting then. And with that, Lombardo coming out with 105 kilograms. Uh, nice 5 kilo jump up <coughs> on her opener at 100. She's had a... Pretty solid day so far. Currently sitting at 183. This would take her to 188. Right, has to fight for it, but that'll be a good lift, and she's excited. All right, one bar. Oh, one red, one red light, but she is going to get that. Not really sure what they saw there with the from the center perspective, but looked like a good lift to me. Check out the replay here from Bardo's clean and jerk. Right, with that we will have the third and final attempt of Lepsa of Romania. Taking a three kilo jump to 105. Again, something we've seen her do um, quite handedly in international competition. She's not lifting quite to the level we are used to seeing her at at this competition, but nevertheless this is to go three for three in the clean and jerk portion. Yes, and I apologize. I've once again putting out a different fire, this time about transportation. A little surprised she took 105. And not able to secure that jerk overhead. So she will finish with 184 kilogram total on the day. And with that, we just have four lifters remaining in this session. Check out the replay here. Clean looked, I want to say easy, but not too bad. All right, we do have a change, and with that, it looks like we will see the opening attempt. Nope. Again, we have yet another change, so it looks like we will see. I'm not 100% sure who we're going to see up next. But it looks like Darcinia of Canada. Hundred seven kilograms, second attempt. She's 
She looks very strong on her opener. Yeah, she's been great all day. Hopefully she's as good again. Jerick makes quick work of that. Oh, yeah. All right. Three whites. And with that, I think we are going to the the opening attempt of Kraska of Poland. Poland, obviously, as we watch this replay of Dorsini of Canada. Poland, um, a nation weightlifting fans should be well familiar with. Very accomplished and... Uh, Pretty good relationship between um, uh, some some significant carryover between uh, USA weightlifting and some great Polish lifters and coaches as well. Yeah, I was thinking that Smosh says obviously being the most uh, high profile of those. He's here all week as our guest and uh, yeah, guest of the IWF 1972 Olympic champion. Oh, not able to really secure that. Um, looks like she actually might have. From my perspective, rushed the jerk a bit after uh, the clean, and that might have put her out of position. Let's take another look at the replay, and you can decide for yourself at home. So, pretty sure we'll see her take that again. Two minute clock for her. Just five. Lifts remain here in the clean and jerk portion of the 53B session. You can see the scoreboard up on your screen right now. Worth noting that Hilga Daughter of Iceland has a chance still to go six for six. The only yeah, good lifter for her. Yeah, in the session who has that who has that opportunity. Yeah, exactly right. And it's uh, be nice to see that. And uh, you know, techniques be very good. There's there's always talk about you know do CrossFitters have as good a technique and. and you know, I, was, I was saying with CrossFit.com earlier that I feel like that's evolved over time, mm -hmm. and perhaps that was once true. And there's still a bell curve of coaches and lifters who have good and better, uh, you know, good, better, really good technique, and sometimes the other way of not so good technique. And I think that probably speaks to to that overall issue. Well, you know, CrossFitters just like weightlifters, um, they want to lift a lot of weight, and the better your technique, the more weight you tend to be able to lift. So taking putting in the reps and taking the time and you will see a lot of crossfitters high level crossfitters like Hulga Dada, who has competed at crossfit's highest level um, working with a lot of top weightlifting coaches so right clearly um, clearly her work paying off she's lifting phenomenally well today but before we see her again we will see crossing coming up for her second attempt miss this on the jerk portion the clean from my perspective at least looked pretty easy so I, I would expect her to have a good run at this one. All right, and three white lights. She <laughs> gives a look. Um, she knows she made that lift, but she gives a look as if to say, why didn't I do that the first time? Let's take a look at the replay. It didn't look hard for her at all. So that's, uh, yeah, very nice. And uh, takes her into the, uh, no, doesn't take her into the lead. Does not now. take her into the lead, yeah, no. The Canadian's still in front because they're about to snatch. All right, and this will be the final attempt of the day for Thurder Erla Holgadotter of Iceland. Again, Iceland, a country that has become internationally well-known for their strength athletes in the sports uh, a few decades ago um, and continuing today of strongman and powerlifting, then CrossFit. And uh, now weightlifting, gradually catching up. What a fight on the clean. And that is one of the gutsiest lifts you'll oh know we've yeah. seen and so far. Six six. And we're actually, our commentary position is close to the the final call area. Uh, that's actually where we are. She's walking past on your screen now. And uh, you can say that they were sufficiently excited. excited. That was awesome. And again, one thing I'll say about Icelandic athletes, um, very strong overhead. And I have seen Icelandic weightlifters 
make jerks after fights on the clean that you would just not expect anyone else to make. Um, so <laughs> really fantastic performance for her. One of the best lists we've seen all week as far as effort. Okay, and with that, Lombardo coming out. This is to go three for three in the clean and jerks as well. And she will. That was her best looking lift of the day. Gives a nod to the judges. You can see it on the replay here. Um, she's excited. She goes five for six on the day, and that will move her to a 191 kilogram total. Yeah, and again, nice to see the passion from from uh, Lombardo here, Jennifer Lombardo of Italy. She's, you know, it's it's hard not to uh, not to enjoy someone like that lifting with such passion on the platform. It's. Um, they're really good to see. She's enjoying her sport. It's not a doesn't seem like a chore for her, you know. And it's no. it's really good to see that. And uh, uh, really nice performance from Lombardo, 191 total. And uh, Darsigny is already in front of this B group, and a two kilo jump.